Joining us now is Ojinika Ojiope with stories trending around the world. Hello, Genix. Legendary Dr. Abati. TGIF, as always. Oh. Good morning, Ayo. How are Good you morning. this morning? Feeling very weekendy already. <laughs> Me too. I'm so excited today that it's Friday. You know it's my best day of the week. Yeah. Well, fine. I hope you're feeling better. Yeah? Perfect. Here, here, here. Perfect. Perfect. Happy well, Friday. TGIF. Well, all right. Good morning to you viewers. Let's begin what's trending. Congratulations are in order as President Bola Ahmed Tinubu was affirmed president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria by the Supreme Court of Nigeria on Thursday, October 26, moments after the judgment was read out by a seven-judge panel. The president was seen congratulating his appointees and exchanging pleasantries with well-wishers. Started from day one to work hard, regardless of you know uh, the court cases. Okay, and uh, just strengthen my resolve uh, to do more. A challenge of this nature, uh, and a, a future of this nature, is more work and more hard work, more dedication. Just appeal to the sense of patriotism of Nigeria to have a change of mindset. Let us be positive about our country, be ready to contribute in all ways possible. There is no promise of El Dorado from day one. We are all in this boat of diversity, a member of the same family, living in the same house, but stay in different rooms. And it is important that we recognize that we have no other country but this one. Absolutely. We have no other country than Nigeria. I actually liked uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's speech there and, you know, just acknowledging the fact that we have to be positive about Nigeria. While it may seem very difficult, but it is the fact, we just have to be positive. Uh, earlier today, I watched uh, Senior Advocate of uh, Nigeria, uh, uh, Robert Clark, talk about the fact that, you know, it's either we change our constitution or the electoral laws. We are going to continue to have these um, issues. There are going to be litigations every four Yes, but my question is why, Ayo? Why? I mean, are we the only emerging economy? Are we the only country that conducts elections? People would say, oh, yeah, in America it's the same thing, politics. But it has to change. We cannot continue on this trajectory. We cannot continue every four years having these issues arise in Nigeria. It is unacceptable. Our laws need to change. Another thing that I found very funny, I mean, I don't even know if I can call it funny, was the fact that he also said, Robert Clark, that it would never change because the people that want that are supposed to make it change Benefit. are the ones that are benefiting from the issues. So, which way Nigeria? Which way Nigeria? But however, another thing that got me in that video was what we talked about <laughs> earlier. Your job your is job secure. Is your, jo your job is secure. <laughs> High five. <laughs> but it's funny. But also. The issue was around the people that were there at that place. Uh, many users on social media were surprised to see Governor Doyo Diri of Bayelsa State, who is a member of the PDP, extending his congratulations to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu at the presidential villa. He joined other members of the APC to acknowledge President Tinubu's win. He is one of the frontline PDP members who supported Atiku during the presidential election, and interestingly, he is preparing for an election next month, while his APC opponent, Timmy Bray Silva, has been disqualified by the Electoral Commission following a verdict. Very interesting to see politicians here. I always say, do not die in their war. <laughs> Another person that was trending was the minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Yesom Wike, who has said that he has no regrets supporting President Bola Ametinu because he was how to ensure equity and justice, and that he owes no one an apology. 
The minister made the comments while playing host to the leaders of the APC from River State, led by the National Vice Chairman South South, Victor Gadom. Rike also pledged to mobilize electoral support for Tinubu in the next election, saying those who scored 2,000 votes in 2023 elections would score next to nothing in 2027. Again, what do we say? Ayo, over to you. All right, let me start with the politicians congratulating. Mm -hmm. It's politics at the end of the day. Not only, I mean, um, they had asked um, Governor, former Governor Wiki, mm -hmm. and now the FCT Minister, what he was doing, in what capacity he was in court mm -hmm. yesterday. And he had mentioned that it was he as a political appointee or a member of the APC because he has still continued to insist that he's still a member of the PDP, yet <laughs> so focused on an APC government. Governor Deleke of Washington State also posted on his Instagram page um, with a handshake picture of he and President and congratulating him and saying, you know, and he's a PDP, uh, you know, governor. So a number of people have, some people have come quickly to establish their uh, best wishes for the president. And to be fair to them, the president did call for even the opposition to yes. come together so that in the interest of Nigeria, they can work together to build this nation. And you asked a question earlier on about um, when, when we all this stop. The truth is that the journey to nation building doesn't happen in one day or one or two or three Absolutely. election cycles. What we must offer, uh, the people must do, is they must never lose hope. The truth is that we, um, we go through a process, we identify gaps, and we ensure that in the period between cycles, we fix those gaps. So the, you know, the attention now should be on building our institutions. Absolutely. If we don't have faith in the judiciary institution, then we must work together to ensure that trust is restored in the judiciary. For those who say they don't have trust, not everyone has said that, to be fair. And so it's important, INEC, we've, we had conversations this week around the appointment of the chairman of INEC. Yes. This mustn't die now. We go, we've, the president has been affirmed, but strengthening our institutions is not just for this particular cycle of elections or this particular government, it is for the soul of the nation. If we are building a nation, we cannot give up or say, oh, I'm so disappointed, I'm going to throw everything away. At the end of the day, what's driving everybody, whether you're in APC, PDP, Labour, is the fact that we want to build a great nation. Yes. Let's build that great nation. I love that, Ayo. Well, in the meantime... Award-winning novelist Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie was a guest speaker at the inaugural lecture of the Africa World Lecture Series at Princeton University in the United States, where she introduced Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Obi as the man who, according to popular opinion, won the presidential election. The award-winning novelist who had written to U.S. President Joe Biden expressing dissatisfaction over the process of the presidential election spoke on Wednesday before the Supreme Court judgment on Thursday. She said some of her literary works were inspired by rage, stirred up by the happenings in Nigeria, particularly referencing the elections. Well, while introducing Peter Obi, Chimamanda described him as a man who she deeply respects. So in Nigeria, when events happen and when there's a big woman or a big man, people say, we want to recognize the presence of... <laughs> so I'm going to ask you to let me be very Nigerian today and say that I want to recognize the presence of a man I deeply respect and a man who I think is a beacon of hope, not just for Nigeria, but for Africa. And he's the man who many of us know won the elections in Nigeria. He's here with us, Mr. Pitobi. <laughs> I just want to let you all know that he's, he's going to tell me off for doing this because he didn't, he didn't want it to be known. And he is also an example of that very rare quality in um, politicians, which is genuine humility. Yes. You know, Chimamanda is a woman I admire. Yeah. I always admire Chimamanda every time she speaks. But I really loved that speech she gave there, which is actually true. When you want to introduce a big man in Nigeria, let me, let me welcome. But I also like the fact that, you know, she touched on that very critical aspect of someone who has humility as a politician, which I yeah. think it's very important for all politicians to emulate. You have to have that type of humility to go into politics in Nigeria, if, if possible. I mean, 
One thing is certain, Peter always stands out when it comes to humility. You know, he's down to earth nature. Yes. He turned a lot of people to him. You can't take that away from him. Uh, Chimamanda says that, that uh, which a lot of people believe in their own opinion, won the election. That's our own opinion. But yes. the Supreme Court, which is the highest body, has ruled on this election that President Tinubu won the election. And we must state this constantly as much as possible. You know, because I get, yes, a lot of people feel disgruntled at all of that. But also the authority of the Supreme Court and institution, you know, and that of INEC that returns the election have stated that President Bola mm -hmm. Tinubu is elected president. And that has also been confirmed by the Supreme Court. So let us follow that. Uh, I must also now press further by saying a couple of things. I appreciate the president's speech. He called on the opposition and all of them, let's come together. Yes, we can come together for the nation to grow. We can give veritable advice. But opposition, too, is patriotism. You see, because we are throwing away the baby with the bathwater. And if we don't couch this conversation properly, we are quickly going to build a one-party state. Opposition is one of the highest form of patriotism. It means that you understand that there's a, there's a diversity in opinion, thought and processes, and you can glean from the ideas of opposition. And let me give you a substantive, you know, argument to, to buttress that. In England, the leader of the opposition party is called Her Majesty's Leader of the Opposition Party. Mm. Let me sweeten it for you, Audrey. Yeah. In England, he's been paid a, an amount called an annual salary to be the leader of the opposition. So the constitution states that the leader of the opposition must be paid a salary to be in opposition. Keir Starmer, as of 2019, was collecting, apart from his 81K salary as lawmaker, was collecting extra 61,000 a year to be leader of the opposition. Okay. I look forward to a day where we in Nigeria were able to pay people to be in the opposition because there must be a balance in government. So people must come together. Yeah, some members of the opposition must... Yes, okay, we support what the president does and support him. But the greatest form of patriotism is to lend your voice in opposition when you feel disgruntled. And that's how you build a nation state. Because nobody knows it all. President Tinubu will never have all the holistic ideas to build Nigeria. He will glean some ideas from people that oppose the things he say and constantly put in another argument. I will also beg the victors to remember that Yes, it is your time to celebrate, it is your time to jubilate, but the interest of the nation is paramount. Do not ever try to shut down opposition voices. Listen to them. A true leader is a leader that is circumspect enough to appreciate a counter-argument. That is one thing we don't do too well in this country. All right. May God help him, may God bless Nigeria, may God bless all of us. Yes. All right. Well, Dr. Bati, a quick point from you on both stories before we take our next Oh, story. okay. First, let me say that what, uh, you know, Mr. Uh, Robert Clark was saying, when he was saying he doesn't think that, uh, you know, we'll get the change that we're looking for. You know, my understanding of it is that, look, the people who are supposed to change the law, they may not summon the political will yes, that's to what make he said. changes. Mm -hmm. But the big lesson of this entire process is that just as we saw in uh, 2019, after every election, after all the litigation, you see civil society, and this is where civil society has to wake up and act you know, uh, in, the, in the national interest to begin to identify all of those areas that we need to take a second look at, particularly in the Electoral Act, Absolutely. particularly also in the uh, Constitution. Uh, the law is a living organism, so you can always change it. And the National Assembly will have to play its role, just as civil society will also have to play its role. So it's not as if, uh, you know, everything is doomed for mm -hmm. Nigeria. It is not. And the second thing, of course, is that there will always be election litigation because it's part of a process. You know, the, the election starts, you campaign, then somebody wins, then you go to court. So there will never be a time when we we'll have to be lamenting and say, oh, why are people going to court? People will always go to court. It's part of the process. What we can see is that there is an end to litigation. Once it ends, people should behave like gentlemen, like patriots. Right. And third, I didn't see anything wrong in Doye Diri congratulating the president. In fact, I have urged this same uh, morning that, look, even the opposition leaders should congratulate the president and let this country move forward.
we have, we have done with campaigns and elections. It's now governance season, and let us govern. Now, you mentioned the uh, uh, former Governor Wiki. Well, I think effectively now, yeah. Governor Wiki uh, uh, has shown that he has joined the APC. Part of the APC what, now. What remains is for him to just cross, because yeah. the PDP will also have very strong grounds mm -hmm. to accuse him of anti-party activities. If the constitution of the PDP that they quote all the time, if it is still uh, a, a living document, mm. because it was even in court. Mm -hmm. A member of PDP, he went to court. Well, all right. And immediately after the uh, uh, ruling, you know, you could see him, he went to the villa, he granted the interview, and all of that. <laughs> what can be more anti-party than that? And he was even hosting APC delegation from uh, River, River State. State. But that is for the PDP to consider. All right, of then. course, it's, it's up to him to decide where he wants to be. But I doubt if it makes sense to be in two places at the same time. Sir, Dr. Barty. We'll take another story. Billionaire businessman and the chairman of Gerugu Power PLC, Femi Otedola, on Thursday was inaugurated as the chancellor of Augustine University in Ekwe, Lagos. The billionaire, who is known for his philanthropic endeavors during the convocation ceremony, made a surprise donation of 750 million naira a scholarship for all students at the university in commemoration of his appointment as chancellor. Otedola, who is also a director at FBN Holdings, in his address said that he made the donation in recognition of the harsh economic situation in Nigeria. I saw him the transforming establishments that are associated with. Therefore, to commemorate my appointments as the chancellor of the university today, and in recognition of the harsh economic situation in the country, I have to each returning student of the university and each new first year student of our university, the amount of one million naira each. <laughs> Towards the 2023-2024 session, school fees of each student. I am told we have 500 returning students and about 250 new year students, making it the last scholarship donation of 750 million naira. There was more donation besides that um, donation. Otedola also pledged 140 million naira for furnishing of the recently completed engineering faculty and another 110 million naira for the installation of street lights around the campus and a new standby generating set bringing his total donation to 1 billion naira to the university. You know, in 2019, Otedola committed 2 billion naira for the construction of the faculty of engineering. I mean, Dr. Abati, we know that, you know, Femi Otedola has been quite, uh, you know, He's such a, a giver. I mean, I only saw recently that he donated $1 million also to the African Center in New York. He's done so well. And um, we only, the other day, we were talking about sports and people. We also talked about Mr. Ibu yes. and, you know, the entertainment. Yes. We've been talking about people that would continue to donate. Yes. I'll pull up some names of beneficiaries of the Femi Otedola Foundation. We have Kristen Chuku. We also had uh, Peter Fregene. Majek Fashek, I was just looking, Sadiq Daba, Victor Olatan, uh, Dr. Inihi Ebong, Kayode, and all of these people, Charles Passi, all these people have benefited from Femi Otedola. And you know, those students, I saw some of the comments on his page, thanking him for the donation. One million naira to each student. Dr. Abati. Well, the Bologna that continues yes. to give. And Femi Otedola's example uh, proves the point that the purpose of capital is to do good and to give back to society. And I think it's a very good example. Um, there are others like him also, of course, uh, Tony Lumelu, Herbert Wigwe, uh, who is building a university somewhere, you know, uh, in, the, in the Midwest. And also you have uh, people like uh, Aige Mokwede, who has a major scholarship program for a lot of people. You have also people like uh, Chief Kassintin Adebutu, people who continue to give. So they teach us a lesson about the purpose of capital, to do good, to promote the human estate. 
congratulations to uh, Femi Otedola on his investiture as uh, Chancellor of the Augustine University. And I think that the university is very lucky to have him. Because if you check, some chancellors, they rely on the university for maintenance. They rely on the university for all kinds of opportunities. He does not need that. Mm -hmm. He is back in the university and he's supporting even the students. He has given 750 of them 1 million naira each. 1 million each, naira each, even yes. to encourage them. And this is not the first time he has done this. He has a Michael Otedola University Scholarship Program, of which many students uh, are going to school. During COVID-19, he was one of those prominent Nigerians who donated money, again, for uh, public good. He has also uh, helped to donate money to National Ecumenica Center in Abuja. I remember that. There was also the Save the UK Children Fund, yes. about uh, $5 million, five million a few, dollars, yes. a, a few years that back. And then so many other things that he has done, including you know, uh, supporting, as you have listed, persons who are vulnerable and who are you know, in uh, difficult circumstances. The lesson of it all is that all of us, no matter how small what you have, just do good. Think about the other person. Provide for the other uh, person. Uh, well, congratulations to all the uh, students who got uh, you know, one million naira uh, from uh, their chancellor. And I hope that they will put that money uh, to very good uh, use. And I hope other billionaires in this country will follow uh, this example. Absolutely. And the examples of other persons that I have named. Absolutely. Well, what would I say? Congratulations to all the students of um, Augustine University in Ekwe. Well done. Bilunia, Femi, Otedola. Well, I'd like to uh, thank you all for your great analysis, as always, on what's trending. <laughs>